Bow hunting is one of the most rewarding forms of hunting. While small game, fish, and turkey are all popular games sought by archers in Kansas, deer are by far the most popular. As new people enter the sport, it is critical that they learn the most efficient and ethical methods to harvest game. This includes learning about shot placement. To ensure a quick and humane kill, a bow hunter must know where the center of the vital zone is located. Only then can he or she choose the correct spot at which to aim. Since a razor-sharp broadhead kills by cutting blood vessels, an arrow must be directed at the largest zone of concentrated veins and arteries. As a deer offers a broadside shot, we must choose just the right spot at which to aim. The best way to accomplish this is to learn the internal anatomy of a deer. We must first be cautioned about large bone structure that may stop an arrow's penetration. The humerus bone and the scapula bone actually cover very little of the ideal aiming zone on a deer standing broadside. However, the location of these bones must be understood when shot placement decisions are made. While not considered an aiming zone, the liver contains many blood vessels. It is located behind the chest cavity, just back of the diaphragm. A deer's lungs offer the largest area of concentrated blood vessels. Consisting of two lobes, these organs nearly fill the chest cavity. The heart, made visible here, is located in the center of the chest and lies between the two lobes of the lungs. Major arteries and veins leading to and from the heart are also shown. To achieve a quick and humane kill, an archer should pick a spot in the very center of the most concentrated area of blood vessels. Experts agree that that spot is approximately here, where the crosshairs intersect a spot slightly above the heart. Note that if the aiming point is missed by three inches in any direction, the broadhead would still pass through a zone resulting in rapid death, usually within seconds. This life-size deer target simulates a deer in many ways. Like a real deer, there are no marked aiming points. However, if we look at the reverse side of the target, we see a simulation of the vital zone. Note that the spot one inch above the heart is slightly below the midline of the target. Now let's take a shot at the target. Imagine that you are a standing bow hunter. Mentally pick an aiming point. Your spot should be about here. That shot struck within an inch of the ideal spot. A quick look at the exposed vitals shows that the arrow angled slightly downward and has passed through the top of the heart. Any big game animal hit in this spot by an arrow tipped with a razor sharp broadhead would die within seconds. In hunting conditions, game does not always offer a broadside shot. A quartering away shot is considered a good shot on deer sized game. However, as shot angles change, aiming points also must change. Learning to pick a spot that will center the vital zone from all acceptable shot angles is an important step toward ethical hunting. Let's use this overhead graphic view to illustrate an aim point for quartering targets. If we could see the vitals, they would be located approximately here. The path of our well-placed broadside shot would have been about here. If we choose the same aiming point on an animal quartering away, the arrow would miss most of the vital zone. When an animal is quartering away, the hunter must visualize an aiming point in line with the center of the chest cavity. For the broadhead to pass through the center of the vital zone, the aiming point must be further back. Notice that an arrow striking in this spot would pass through the center of the vital zone and exit slightly in front of the opposite front leg. As the quartering angle changes, the aiming point will also change slightly. The key here is to visualize the center of the vital zone within the animal. 
To help us do that, we've placed a tennis ball on the vertical plane directly above the center of the kill zone. It's at the midline of the three-dimensional target. Notice that our arrow, shot from the broadside angle, passes directly underneath this marker. Now let's view the target from a quartering angle. The proper aiming spot will be directly beneath our marker, about here. As we view a more extreme angle, the aiming spot changes again. Use this method to practice visualizing the center of the vital zone on quartering shots. Just pre-drill a hole through a tennis ball, then place a nail through the hole. You can then stick the ball to any 3D target. As we prepare to take a shot at a quartering target, we must select an aiming point farther back of the rib cage and slightly below the midline of the deer's body. Pick your spot. It should be about here. That arrow should pass through the center of the vital zone. The majority of Kansas bow hunters hunt deer from tree stands. This places the hunter 10 to 15 feet above ground level. If a bow hunter chooses to hunt from a tree stand, he or she must practice shooting from an elevated position, especially with broadheads. Those who use sights should set their sights while shooting from a tree stand or similarly elevated position. Pin adjustments are often necessary. Shooting at game from above also demands changing the aiming point. Let's again look at a graphic simulation. If we could see the vital zone from this angle, we would see that the heart and lungs are located about here. Our ground level broadside shot was aimed about here to pass through the center of the vitals. If an arrow shot from a tree stand entered at the same point, only a small portion of the vital zone would be hit. To pass through the center of the vital zone, it must enter higher on the side of the deer. If the hunter is higher or the deer is closer, the aiming point must be even higher. Let's again use the tennis ball to visualize our aiming point. We'll place it in a horizontal plane corresponding to the center of the vital zone. Notice that our broadside shot lines up well with our marker. Now when we view the target from an elevated position, we can follow a horizontal line from our marker to help us choose our aiming spot. If we climb higher or the animal is closer, the aiming spot will again change. Let's try this on our deer target. Again, the center of the vital region must be visualized. The elevated bow hunter must pick a spot higher on the deer's side than was necessary at ground level. Pick your spot now. It should be about here. That arrow should center the vitals. If the deer was standing closer to the base of the tree, the aiming spot would be even higher. Pick your spot now. It should be about here. That's a good shot, but archers should be cautioned about shooting at broadside deer from extremely high angles such as this. The scapula bone presents a problem for such shots. Notice that there is no room for error above the last arrow. In such situations, experienced bow hunters often let deer walk further past allowing a slight quartering away shot. This allows an aiming point farther back. The arrow will enter behind the scapula bone, but will angle forward into the vital zone. For tree stand hunters, the aiming point will change depending upon two factors, how high the stand is located and how far from the base of the tree the deer is standing. A deer standing directly beneath a bow hunter offers a very poor shot. The hunter should be patient and hope for a better angle. Similarly, when a bow hunter hunts from a very high stand, shot angles become difficult when a deer is close. Choosing a high tree stand may prevent animals from smelling human scent. However, shots are often more difficult, especially for young or inexperienced bow hunters. 
To fully appreciate the difficulty of these extreme angle shots, let's look at the potential kill zone on a shot from a moderate angle from above. To guarantee a quick, humane kill, experts agree that an arrow should pass through both lungs, or one lung and the heart. Notice there is room for error at this moderate angle. A shot can go several inches higher than intended and still pass through both lungs. Or it can drop several inches lower than the aiming point and still pass through one lung and the bottom of the heart. Now let's look at the kill zone on a shot coming from above at an extreme angle. The effective kill zone at this angle is greatly reduced. Notice that the spine makes it impossible to strike both lungs, and only a small aiming zone will strike one lung in the heart. Such high angle shots are difficult and can result in wounding. This suggests that inexperienced archers should limit the height of their tree stands to 10 or 12 feet, and that shooting from higher stands demands advanced shooting skills. Understanding shot placement and effective accuracy range are just part of ethical bow hunting. Shot selection is another critical element. It must be understood and accepted that just because an animal is within your effective bow range, there is no certainty that the animal will turn to offer a high percentage shot opportunity. Never force a shot because you fear an animal might get away. Only a selfish person, hoping to boost his or her ego, will take a low percentage shot at the expense of the animal. Head-on or quartering forward shots will often result in a wounded or lost animal. Don't take those shots. Because of the bone structures in the front legs, front quartering and head-on shots offer small kill zones and if taken, often result in wounding. You should choose to always turn down such shot opportunities. The future of bow hunting depends on the actions of bow hunters. Don't allow your actions to harm this great sport. Ethical bow hunters make shot selection decisions before they hunt. That statement bears repeating. Ethical bow hunters make shot selection decisions before they hunt, and they abide by those decisions during the hunt. You should decide to take only broadside or quartering away shots that are unobstructed and within your effective range. During the following scenes, choose when you would take a shot. Also select your aiming point. You have called this deer using a grunt call. Choose when to shoot and pick a spot. As is often the case when calling deer, there was never a chance for a high percentage shot. When walking to your stand one afternoon, you walk up on the buck you've been hoping will come underneath your tree stand. Choose when to shoot and pick a spot. Unfortunately, the tall weeds between you and the deer prevented a high percentage shot. The deer was obviously not spooked. Proceed to your stand and wait for a better opportunity. You are almost to your tree stand and you see another buck. You use several large tree trunks to shield your approach. 
the timber is wet and your approach is quiet. You are 15 yards away. Choose when to shoot and pick a spot. Shoot now. You have used a hill to stalk within easy range of this mule deer. You have positioned yourself to draw your bow and the herd is only mildly disturbed. Choose when to shoot and pick a spot. Shoot now. You are in your tree stand at the edge of an alfalfa field when you hear something behind you. You've never seen deer approach from that way before. Choose when to shoot and pick a spot. Don't try to force a shot. Clear small limbs from between trees for more open shooting lanes. Some hunters grunt at walking deer to stop them within those open lanes. You are well hidden behind several antelope decoys. Choose when to shoot and pick a spot. If you were going to shoot, this would be an ideal aiming point. However, since this pronghorn is alert and looking at you, it is likely it will move before your arrow hits. Most bow hunters will pass on this opportunity and wait for the pronghorn to relax and look away. You saw this pronghorn buck grazing toward a small saddle and you got there ahead of him. The distance is 20 yards. You have just drawn your bow and the pronghorn hardly noticed the movement. Choose when to shoot and pick a spot. Shoot now. You've been following four bull elk for over an hour. They've been traveling slowly and feeding often, even sparring at times. You've closed ground each time they've crested a hill. This time they've stopped to feed just over the crest and you've closed the distance to less than 20 yards. You can't top the crest now or they'll see you. Finally, all of the bulls have turned to walk directly away. Not one of them sees you as you top the hill and draw your bow. You cow call with the diaphragm in your mouth. The bull you want calmly turns, expecting to see a cow elk. Don't forget to pick a spot. Shoot now. 